Welcome to the online lectures on measurements and instrumentation. I am Dr. Majid Kaur from the Department of Mechanical Engineering. I'll be the instructor for this course. This is the outline of the course. Measurements is the vehicle for new understanding of physical world and it's, the, it's also considered as the ultimate test of any theory or design. We would go into the details of measurement and the instrumentation in this course and we would study various aspects of all these things. But this is the outline. This is specifically about understanding measurement as a science and studying the underlying principles that are used in the design of instruments for measurement of physical quantities. The prerequisites for this course is basic electrical and electronics that you have already done in your maybe second semester and fourth semester levels, engineering mechanics, theory of machines, and some basics of fluids and thermal systems. Well, uh, the course objectives are to understand the significance of measurements and analyze the characteristics of various instruments in day-to-day -day life, scientific laboratories and industries. To understand fundamental principles of sensors, transducers and the signal conditioning circuits in the basic measurement task. We have also the objective as to understand various sensing techniques for measurement of motion and force in particular and to understand the techniques for measurement of temperature and pressure in particular. So we will restrict our you know, syllabi and our objectives to these things. And these are the out outcomes that after the end of this course, you should be able to explain the significance of measurement and analyze the characteristics of various instruments used in scientific laboratories and instrument ind industries. Should be also able to select and design sensors, transducers, signal conditioning circuits for a particular measurement task. Should be able to explain the physical principles associated with various sensors. And again, same principles different principles for pressure flow and temperature. These are the course contents. We have module one, where we have introduction to measurements and instrumentation. Module two will take over sensors and signal conditioning in detail. Module three will have particular uh, no, uh, sensors or instruments that we study that are used for the measurement of motion and force. And module four, the four, fourth module, the last module will take about, talk about pressure and temperature measurements. The textbooks that I have generally uh, used and you would uh, i would also recommend for you to follow is uh, mechanical measurements by thomas beckwith and others it's by pearson and alan morris measurement and instrumentation for references you can use measurement book by nakra and dublin is also sometimes preferred in mechanical engineering and we have a reference book of handbook of measurement modern sensors by fred this is also a nice book all right, so let's move to module one. So we would study about measurements and instrumentations as the basics here. So we first cover the background and significance of measurements. Measurement as a science, instrument types and performance characteristics, and then error, errors during the measurement process and the calibration. Now, uh, now ever since the uh, human civilizations that we uh, have studied in history, measurements has been really significant in terms of, you know, the human lives, because uh, we, we would, it's part of human nature to have trade, to exchange things, to exchange goods in order to, you know, fulfill the requirements of one another. And we would, we would really do buying and selling, which was obviously the cent central to the civilizations. And uh, one of the oldest things that you must have heard about is barter trade that was used to basically exchange things with each other. And we have something called as human torso that was used as a standard to basically do such kind of, you know, buying and selling where you would, you know, sell, let's say, a cloth or you would sell, let's say, a rope or something like that. And because you would have to do a fair transaction, so you will have to measure it so that you are really on a profit and you really are benefited. So... Measurement has been there from the, you know, uh, ancient times and it has been so significant to human lives that it's actually a part of today's life also. But uh, why, why, why we are studying this as a course is not just about these small things in terms of exchange, but uh, we will know later why this is as an engineering course that we are studying here. It's not just about exchange. It's not just about buying and selling. It's about various important things actually that form the central to the to the current industrial civilization, or we can say industrial revolution that is actually you know we are actually witnessing 
so why actually measurements have been you know or measurements and instrumentation has been considered or you know, converted to a really a course or engineering science now uh, the measurement of size which is length weight and height was done with, with kind of a human arm so you would consider this as a basic you know measurement you would say that this is one arm in length this sheet is one arm in length or two arms in length three arms in length but obviously because of the variations in the human arm lengths because of the variations in the physical structure nothing was really a, a, a basic standard that would exist universally so we could use somebody's you know arm as the standard but obviously this would not work as a universal standard for everyone but obviously we can say that this was something that we used in the ancient times and obviously measurements has been there from the uh, earlier or the ancient times similarly measure, measuring weights you would you could see this this is some some weights that 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 have been you know from the from the historic you can say civilizations that have happened these are some of the historic you know artifacts these depict actually on the weights that have been used you know uh, in the ancient times obviously to measure the 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 weight of any other object you would use these standard weights so this has been the practice from from the from the ancient times this tells us this measurement is actually very significant similarly this was how you would measure you you could basically develop this type of a scale which is again used today also in terms of an allen deflection type of method of measurement and you could also measure time you, you must have seen this uh, time machine that was a very standard machine and this is used these days also sometimes but this was obviously used to actually sometimes you know to measure the time taken or to you know to keep a timer to keep a counter kind of thing in order to do this particular task in a particular amount of time so this tells us about some of the history about measurements and this is a a, a photo from a or an image from a book which actually reflects some of the you know traditional things that was used in the measurement that is if you see in this case you have a palm or a span and it says one span is equal to three palms so one palm is from here to here and this is one span so this were these were the units uh, you know used in the ancient times or you can see earlier pre you, know, you can see in the historic times that we have you know uh, basically that that has that the world has witnessed actually and uh, similarly roman steel yard it says fourth century ad and uh, you can look at this egyptian granite domed weight 120 pounds this is again 850 bc and uh, these are these are these have been taken from the museums greek clay cup half a you know this is approximately one half of pint this is again a unit so you could also measure things by saying i will give you half cup of this or one cup of you know water one cup of milk and you exchange something with the you know other items so this was actually used as a you know measurement standard and again stone weight of two talents again it is you know in the you know bc 200 2260 bc so from the earlier very earlier times and obviously one fathom these 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 are some of the you know actually images that tell you actually about various things one yard all these things actually tell if tell you about actually measurements being the very important part of human civilizations from the ancient times also now for fair transactions proper measurements actually were very important and to have really better standards because the standard here was the human arm length or maybe palm length but because this would vary from person to person so who was the standard what was the standard whether this standard is available available everywhere in every place of you know trade that was not possible so obviously you need you need to have better standards and that's what actually would lead to some some of the developments in this area which includes like using a teaspoon or sorry a tablespoon a cup a paint and all, you know this kind of things some some basic skills that were developed or you can say a gallon a gallon kind of a you know a tumbler or something like could have been used and obviously this led to some development of new things like you have some standard weights these days a standard measuring tape a measuring you know electrical you know parameters like a, a, a multimeter or you can say a, a temperature measuring you know instrument a ther thermometer so this is something like this these are things that that we use in our day-to-day -day life also but uh, all these things can be compared like this that we have ancient and modern instruments what would be used earlier and what is now being used as a standard equipments but 
we would say that the model instruments were now appropriate for basic domestic and other needs. But what is the need for this course again? Why is measurements and instrumentation an important field? So that we basically, you know, all, you know, can say connect to actually the industrial revolution. So now industrial revolution is something that has actually led to measurements being considered as a science and measurements and instrumentation being taught as a definite science that we basically need to actually, you know, where we need to actually create these standards, create the measurement processes, measurement techniques to be in a more, in a more standard way. So obviously with the rapid, rapid development of various new things and obviously we have seen new and advanced instruments now being used in the in the in the in the daily life and also in the industrial you know arena and obviously you you would expect things to be you know uh, created in numbers in large numbers and to to make things you know in large numbers would involve you know would actually sometimes derail the accuracy and and the other parameters so so you would write you would know, like to have really accurate and faster things to be made and obviously they should be cheap also so all these things with the, all these constraints it was harder to satisfy so research and development took place and instruments actually you know a lot of actually research and development went into instruments to create more accurate and more cheaper instruments and obviously with the digital age or you can say with the information and technology revolution we have computers being used you know and the microprocessors or microcontrollers being used as part of the measurement techniques and that's why we have computer based um, measurements and control we have a lot of you know equipments a lot of industries that use that use these days computer based measurement and control and these days we have Internet of Things as one of the new techniques that's coming up as artificial intelligence, machine learning. All these things are actually very important because they finally take the data and then they do data analysis and then they predict and then they take decisions based on those data. But obviously, if you understand, taking this data would mean actually having the right instrument or the right sensor to take that data. If the instrument or the sensor is not the, the correct one or not of that standard, so obviously all the analysis actually is also not of that proper standard. Now all these things have been added so we can say that from the measurement kind of uh, using body measurements in the ancient times to wooden sticks and using measuring tools in the modern times we have these days digital measuring instruments. So these involve you know sometimes you know various types of instruments that we use this involves mechanical electrical and electronics and computer science all together to form these instruments. Some of the engineering applications that we, you know, focus on is let's say dimension measurements, it's length, width, height, or we have motion parameters in terms of position and velocity accelerations. We have pressure and temperature flow measurements. We have forces and torques, stress strain. Some of the electrical parameters that are also significant, other than various other, you know, including various others. We have voltage, current, and resistance that we generally encounter with. So this just gives you some pictorial representation of a of a gas industry where the 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 measurement of gas pressure is very important in critical you know industries you cannot let the gas pressure you know basically go beyond certain limits so if if it does go then you need to control it so that the pressure remains within the limits otherwise it could be catastrophic it could be dangerous it could really be you know really dangerous for for, for the whole you know place for the for the people around so you need to really measure the the gas pressure it could be sometimes you know bad for the even the performance of that system that is being finally produced similarly uh, you have temperature measurements which is actually very important in these industries you are you are creating in larger numbers things in larger numbers so you need to be you know, very accurate also so you need to measure all these parameters very carefully and also to compare or to control them you need to have these measurements to be very accurate Similarly, in the in the industries, in the various other sectors, also you need proper measurements. You could see an example of a, you know, a turning operation being done on a lathe, and then the measurement being taken by Bernier caliper here. So this tells you, you know, the the importance of these measurements in creating, you know, all these you know, big in big numbers, all these billets and all these pipes and other structures. So just an example, if you see. Uh, that if you, if you just you know you know let this pipe be of a different diameter than the you know than the one that is desired so the first thing is it could actually unnecessarily increase your cost because if you are making thousands of pieces of uh, even a small 
my you know millimeter of a you know or i can say you know inaccuracy you could lead to you know you know, you know you're wasting a lot of money actually or in other way words you, you could say you know, in the other sense that if you do not make it proper actually as per the requirements then the performance of this thing would not really you know be of that standard because this could be part of any other equipment that is being further used for example in the in the in the manufacture of engine cylinder and other things if you do not really keep the accuracy and tolerance to a particular limits that is desired then it would be really dangerous to you know or it could be really you know bad for the engine to have its performance you know really going down so that's why you know to have accuracy and you know to have all these things is very important and which leads or which which calls for a a better measurement measuring instruments again uh, this is a proximity sensor or you can say color sensors we, we use in the industries for, for in the in the assembly operations or you use you know position sensors again it's a robot you know actually you know you know uh, with a cnc machine these are they are actually kind of it's in a, in a typical modern industry you have robot robots actually doing pick and place or other operations and you have cnc machines in which the loading and unloading can be done by a robotic manipulator so all all those things actually could involve some some sensors at the end effectors which is very 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 important to have them to be very accurate so we use something called as you must have heard of lvdt it's a linear linear wedding differential transformer and it is it is typically used as a position sensor and it's, it's highly accurate as a position sensor then coming to automotive sector you must have heard about abs anti-lock braking system so where actually which is considered to be highly you know you know special than the traditional braking system as an example you could see a person driving a car and if if he just you know comes across this car from the other end so he you know he he kind of tries to safely you know drive through this 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 path but because of and the 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 traditional braking system he may skid and he may really you know you know really go his orientation may really go haphazard but because of the abs the the, the technology of abs you have you know, a smooth path being taken and he moves he follows the the right track and this is how because you use something called as abs wheel speed sensors and you have a lot of control units that are associated with this but because you're measuring things properly so your wheel sensors you have control module all these things are there so that actually enable you to actually do something called as automotive sorry anti-lock braking system that actually improves the performance of your car so modern vehicles you must have heard about this have almost 50 to 60 sensors and transducers employed for safer economical and efficient drives for example using an airbag which is for primarily for safety and obviously you you must have seen this type of you know, video this is not an accident this is basically a crash test that is done by ncap you you can just google it ncap so there's a, these are the crash tests that has done these are something called as destructive testing so here we actually we can model these you know systems and then avoid having destructive testing but we may not really be able to exactly model these so we go for something called a destructive testing in which actually a lot of sensors are actually employed on the body of the you know car on the body of the vehicle and sensors are also employed on the dummy 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 driver driver on his body a lot of sensors are also put in and then there you can you can have airbags and the sensors associated with it and the actuators so all these are part of this so this is only destructive testing this enables us to actually predict you know at what you know at some speed and at some maybe you know kind of kind of an accidental profile what is actually happening to different parameters right so that help us helps us basically to improve or even to prove that the the designed vehicle is much better the strength or the the and the the kind of you know structure structural you know and the the thickness of the sheets and the various other things associated with the design of a car is much better than the other one so that is actually so this destructive testing is one part of it and plus the sensors are also used in in the modern vehicles you, have, you must have heard about you know parking sensor you must have heard about the speed sensor you must have heard about abs and other things that are used actually in the in the in the vehicles for example in, in in detecting the the crash so the moment there's a crash so you have uh, an airbag that actually 
gets up you know to save you from from that accidental kind of you know, impact so so you have a crash sensor it should be very accurate and the actuator should be also very you know fast so that in that i would say in millisecond or microsecond this all should actually inflate and then avoid the passenger being you know you know, you know and, or it can hurt so this is you can just maybe see this 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 can be actually in this case the crash sensor is the most important part which actually measures the 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 uh, you can say the right you know, accident because otherwise you know, if your sensor is poor even even if you break down at some place it may again inflate this bag you know and then that would be really you know bad for the driver so it has to be really accurate the controller has to be really intelligent to actually inflate this bag at the at the right time and at the right impact now uh, these are the other sensors that are used we have vision sensors we need to you know sometimes you in you in robotics we use vision sensors sometimes we have occluded views we want to pick and place some specific things or we want to pick and place in a proper orientation so the robot can go to different places but with the help of vision sensor it, it can actually you know identify the images and then do something called as you know visual image processing and then actually it can do a particular task so vision is very important then we have something called as force torque sensors that are used in the robotics. So we want to do something called as force control. Force control is actually very significant when you do you know, use robots for a task where where the where the where the object is actually very you know soft, or it could be something like you know you know cleaning a clean cleaning something like uh, a glass or holding a you know bulb in a, in the robotic end effector. So all the, those could be sometimes very dangerous, but with the use of appropriate and accurate force torque sensors, you can do a lot of such things very accurately. And this is this is actually very important in the in the industries these days. This is highly you know you know used in the industries these days these type of robots. And additionally, you can have joint angle or torque sensors. So joint angle sensors, it could be something called as optical encoders or maybe something like potentiometers could also be used. You have tactile sensors where actually you can detect the pressure and other things and you can you can have even dynamic tactile sensors this is a typical example of your smartphone these days that we use so you can just identify the importance of measurement in day-to-day -day life now in the engineering arena so accelerometer gyroscope electronic compass pressure sensors these are all employed these days in your smartphones but they are obviously something called as at the MEMS level, that is micro electromechanical system. So they are at a microns level. We have produced such, you know, kind of, you know, uh, sensors. So they, they seem to be a small chip, you know, embedded on your microphone, you can say motherboard, but they, they can do all these, you know, measurement of your acceleration, orientation, and even they can tell you about the direction, they can tell you about the amount of pressure that you are applying on the screen. And then you can even have the image sensor because you have a camera at the front and the back all these things sometimes the proximity sensor is also there so a lot of sensors a microphone to de detect your voice this is also a sensor so all those things are actually embedded these days in your smartphone so in day-to-day -day life we have these instruments or sensors actually we are using considerably such things in our day-to-day -day life the coming to the medical applications so you know that you know blood pressure is very important for for a human being and maintaining that blood pressure is very important but because of some 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 health related issues these blood pressures sometimes drop or increase so you need to actually measure them you need to identify the blood sugar in a patient so sometimes the sugar of a patient may really go shoot up or it may really go down so you need to really measure these things mri ct scan for the internal problems that are associated with human beings in when they have some medical emergency measuring temperature measuring you know anything from the college ultrasound that we generally use and then blood chemistry, x-ray, these are some of the applications where we actually measure a lot of things actually related to human body. And this is an example of an MRI scan. So this is again a measuring instrument because you are measuring the, the internal you know, you know, organs, you are measuring various defects in the internal organs or various issues with the internal organs. So this could be even classified as a measuring instrument. You have blood chemistry meter, which gives you the, you know, the CBC, the the, the the levels of platelets and other things that are very vital for the human beings. You have glucometer where you can actually measure the you know, the the uh, glucose level or the sugar level of, of a patient. And these instruments are now so ubiquitous; they are so you know uh, now easily manufactured that you can see them almost in 
almost you know you know available in in the market and almost used by many people around the world you have a blood pressure measuring machine that that can be you know kept at the home also just to monitor blood pressure if you in the emergency and you have pulse oximeter that is again used you know in in the in the present covid also we have seen that how important this pulse oximeter is used for for the people uh, you know who would actually face a lot of difficulty in breathing and who's you know you know this respiration rate actually or you can say you can say the breathing or you can say there is there's problem with their breathing so this could be easily used to monitor that such things now this is a uh, this is a typical image that we see these days uh, during this covid pandemic where we we see a person is being monitored continuously uh, for the temperatures uh, using a thermal imaging or a thermal gun so this is again uh, very important and crucial because we would like to know the temperature we would like to know whether he is suffering from fever which is one of the symptoms of covid 19 so so such instruments actually are quite helpful and now quite you know widespreadly used throughout the world where the need has arisen so an instrument is very important in this case and similarly in airports where you cannot screen almost one by one maybe sometimes you may need something called a thermal imaging cameras so where you can, you can basically you know get a an image like this where uh, you can say you can you can you can at least predict which of the persons are likely to be screened because with with with, with thermal cameras like this you know which can detect actually the temperature of a person from long distances in in bulk so this could be quite useful actually so again this is a temperature measuring instrument we can call this uh, a thermal imaging camera so so these applications actually tell you about the the importance of such instruments and uh, in terms of a, a typical hosp hospital use we have mechanical ventilation it is a process whereby a person is actually you know ventilated for oxygen through a machine rather than by his own lungs this is also needed in in anesthesia or or in these pandemics also we have seen the requirements of ventilators has actually been has grown up so ventilators where ventilators here actually try to measure or try to assist a person with oxygen you know this is completely mechanical ventilator but the most important thing it's not so easy to do such tasks you need to monitor the pressure that goes into the lungs of the patient suppose this is the suppose this is the lung of the patient so this is another lung so the pressure that goes into the lung of the patient is actually very critical because there are something called alveolis which actually are responsible for transferring the oxygen to the blood so so those alveolus are actually very 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 soft and the moment you you go for an increased pressure they can burst or they can even cause something called barotrauma these are some of the things that you, rather than assisting you can actually destroy a patient's lung and actually you know kind of kind of cause him serious injuries so in such devices also it's very important to monitor the pressure levels <coughs> sorry to monitor the volume flow rate to more to monitor various other parameters actually and um, something called as in inhale and exhale ratio breaths per minute all these are actually very important you need measurement devices for this you cannot do such complicated tasks without actually a very important measurement you know of the pressure the, you know the the inspiration expiration ratio the breaths per minute all such things are actually very important this is an example of a a drug delivery system to the patient where it is aut automatically you know delivering drugs at some you know rate of some uh, let's say uh, drugs you know ml per per second and all those things we also as part of exercise had developed a, a, a mechanical ventilator during this pandemic this we called as rohdar you must have heard about this so this is a mechanical ventilator that we developed we just you know gave us a lot of experience actually in developing these mechatronic devices so this is a typical mechatronic device but uh, let me share with you that this is uh, this was really a challenging task but the most important thing that we have felt in this mechanical uh, you know ventilator was actually the the sensors or you can say the instruments for measurement of pressure and flow so it was really you know something that got us interested and then 
a little bit challenging because this was to be implemented practically on critical patients so this was the challenge so so that's why i say i put this example here because in terms of measurements and instrumentation one of the challenging task was to have a right instrument to have the right measuring and then to calibrate that to basically verify that all such things are very important in a mechatronic device similarly in very complicated tasks like robotic manipulator or robotic surgery something called open heart surgery or you have really complicated cardiac surgeries and other surgeries that are done with robotics because in robotic surgery why do we need robotic surgery is because we would like to you know reduce the something called as tremor that is there with the you know human let's say uh, that, that's with the doctors while you know doing these type of surgeries and we have something called as neurosurgeries and these can be very complicated because uh, even a small mistake actually can be very dangerous so such tasks are being assisted by robots and while robots do these things you will also need to actually measure what robots are doing the the position the orientation the velocities the forces that are encountered so all those are very critical in actually such types of complicated tasks which can actually help us improve the surgical you know skills but actually are very dangerous also so we need to measure them so a typical view of a robotic surgery a person is a surgeon is here and then there is a uh, patient who is being actually operated by the robots and he actually actually moves the device here and then something called as master and this is the slave so this type of environment actually depicts a very complicated you know modern uh, surgical systems but actually they need you know sensors actually in this in these things also now the environmental ap applications are you can measure wind speed with instruments you need to measure wind speed you need to measure the average day and night temperature the weather forecast average rainfall flood level earthquake magnitude all these are actually very important these are the environmental applications of instruments or measurements other applications of measurements could be you can have a economical performance what is gdp how do you measure that so there is a measurement technique for this university rankings students performance in a course teacher needs to measure actually the performance so he needs measurement techniques product performance and efficiency so this can this is again a classification given in a book where it, it tells us about the different applications so we have military and aerospace we have considerable applications in sensors and in transducers or you can say measurements heavy construction engineering general industrial applications laboratory test and scientific studies again considerably important because you have a lot of theories that need to be verified so you need to have measurements automobile and cons consumer market we have seen example of abs and other applications environmental engineering we just saw medical and biological systems we have just seen again weather data measurements data communications so these all these tell you about the 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 considerable applications of measurements and instrumentations so applications can now be classified into broadly into maybe four so one is basic comparison let me just take it back so in terms of regulating trade you need basic quantity length mass volume so you need a basic comparison so this could be one of the application monitoring of process and operation so you need to monitor processes you need to mon monitor operations so first need thing is you need to measure first thing is you need to measure and then accordingly you need to take action so what is the fuel you know uh, level that is left what is the speed that i am moving with what is the compass telling me the direction so that i need to actually take action accordingly about barometers thermometers all these are generally this could be manual and then this could be automatic also so control of automatic uh, process and operations is again third application broad application where we need to have automatic feedback or control systems the industrial processes that you not generally do not want to control manually or if for aircraft control systems abs and all those things you need to have you know automatic control but obviously that needs sensing similarly quality control is very important because this is an application of measurements you measure something and then you accordingly control it so quality is very important in industries similarly the last one is experimental engineering analysis where ex physical experimentation is the ultimate test a lot of theories are being put in but you need to actually verify them with experiments so all these experiments will require sensors or instruments now it's very important uh, or very common quote in measurements and instrumentation the accuracy and resolution with which an output variable of a process is controlled so the accuracy and resolution 
with which an output variable the output the desired output of any process actually is controlled the you know, how how accurately this process output is controlled it can never be better than the accuracy and the resolution of the measuring instruments used or i can say it can never be better than the accuracy and resolution of the sensor used so you should understand this fact that in any measurement system or an automatic system or a manual system even if you want to actually control this output variable of a plant say for example you want to control the position of a robot the position of a cnc machine okay or the velocity of the machine or velocity of the robot this this accuracy of you know this accuracy uh, controlling this output variable actually will depend mostly actually on the sensor controller is also important the plant itself the, the something that we are actually manipulating with or controlling but the most important thing in this whole control system is actually the sensor this you should understand keep in your mind again again repeat this the accuracy and resolution with which an output variable of a process is controlled can never be better than the accuracy and resolution of the measuring instrument used so so the the the, the level of accuracy and resolution of the instrument used will actually determine the level of accuracy and resolution of the output variable so again a typical example of a home heating control system where you have a thermostat controller fuel furnace valve and then uh, you have uh, the home heating process some disturbances and you need to control this so the most important thing is the temperature sensor so the so if the temperature sensor's quality is good then the the house temperature can be controlled very well if the quality is bad then it will have a direct impact on the output so you can look at the details later on now now with all these things i i hope you have understood that if we have imprecise measurements we will have inaccurate uh, sorry if we if we have inaccurate instruments we will have imprecise measurements all right so this is now i think evident Impre inaccurate instruments would lead to imprecise measurements and it can lead to a lot of you know something like this defects and accident or such now measurement as a science so they say whatever ex exists exists in some amount now we have measurement which is the input something we want to measure that is that is the position velocity acceleration some mm, volume or we want to measure the weight or we want to measure temperature we want to measure the the sound we want to measure the wind speed we want to measure the the and um, the forces we want to measure the pressure we want to measure you know other such quantities sometimes we we really have some standards you know that are ready with us we compare the process the compare of you know the process of comparison is the actually the measurement and then we have the result so this is kind of the process of measurement or you can say fundamental measuring process there are some definitions so measurement is a process of comparing a physical variable with an established standard so this input variable or the physical variable is actually called as measurement something that is to be measured with an established standard so we compare the two that is the input and the standard that is available and then we basically provide the output for example we are measuring length of a cloth so we have a scale a steel tape scale or we have some you know uh, a, a, a solid scale then we you know try to measure the length of the cloth with that so that's a standard that's established and we determine how many you know how many or how much is the length of the you know that is uh, that, that cloth so that is comparing it actually with an established standard so that's a very basic example in domestic we have so again another definition is the process of experimentally obtaining one or more quantity values that can reasonably be attributed to a quantity so again this is one of the other ways of explaining what measurement means actually or measurement as a science so it's an experimental you know obtaining something or some quantity which we are actually interested in it's doing it experimentally like finding out the values that can be reasonably attribu attributed to a quantity one more definition process of comparing an unknown quantity with a standard of the same quantity or standards of two or more quantities measurement is a process by which one can convert physical parameters to meaningful numbers okay so we have temperature temperature we, we can feel as let's say increased temperature we can feel as being very hot so so what, what does it actually mean in terms of control so we convert it into some values like you know, 97 degrees 98 degrees 
so that has to be now uh, we need to take an action so that is what could be understood even by the computer so we, we have something for a meaningful number so we need to do those things so this is again called as measurement the fundamental methods of measurement that exist are direct comparison where we have just you know, put an example of measuring a cloth with a scale so that is a direct comparison and we have other techniques to do such things or for such other quantities so we generally compare with the standard that is established so we have for example a very basic example is suppose we have a big milk tank and we want to measure you know two liters out of this so we have a one liter can one liter can and we want to measure how much is this milk in the big can so what we can do is this is an established standard a one liter can so we can just pour this and then finally pour it in another tank one by one so we can tell how many liters are here all right so this is an established standard so we are measuring the milk here with an established standard and getting the final quantity all right or we can say with a secondary standard for example here we have an example of a measuring tape steel tape which is flexible or maybe it could be and then these are generally barest essential you can say measurements so here we don't really worry that the 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 lead, the, the, the milk that we want to get is 5.01 liters so it really you know ma it doesn't matter actually in this case so we so these are kind of barest essential measurements or we want to you know weigh, weigh some other quantity that we get from the market so it may be 10 kgs and maybe 0.2 or 0.23 kgs so maybe this would hardly matter for a even for a seller or a buyer all right so but these are these these ways are generally simpler and they are enough for let's say our measurements so again in direct comparison sometimes it's very difficult for humans you know something to have something like these standards that are established so in such cases these direct comparison may not work for example let's say we can see in the measurement of stresses in the measurement of forces on some objects so we may not really have some you know or you can say human faculties like human human hand human fingers human eyes human ears cannot really measure that quantity so it, it really in this direct comparison becomes difficult to be you know really uh, applied there so now this is the least common uh, you know being used in the industries because of this these problems or because of the limitations of human faculties and we want to automate we want to be so in industries where we really are you know concerned actually with with the you know the accuracy with the automatic you know control processes we cannot really rely on human measurements or maybe inaccurate measurements that generally we do as humans so that's why uh, we go for something called as indirect comparisons this is the other alternative method of measurements here we actually use a transducing device we use a transducer i can explain you about transducers later on so this is something uh, you know i can say as a as a as a device that converts one form of energy to another form for example if there is heat that can be converted to voltage so all all such things it transduces you know these 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 energies so this becomes a kind of an apparatus rather than you know doing it by a very standard method so in this case obviously we have seen transducer converts basic form to analogous form and this is actually more intelligent and more resourceful because this is more accurate and this is more you know sensible because this 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 would be better than the humans at least in terms of not you know in terms of humans have, may have you know varied you know answers for a particular question in terms of you know measurement but these instruments may not really have such problems and this obviously becomes more resourceful but in these cases we need something called as amplification filtering recording and transferring we'll see these things later on so this 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 information that we get from the instruments may not be really you know something that we can really use we need to amplify those signals we need to filter we need to record or we need to transfer for actually taking a particular decision based on them now most measurements that we take actually are mechanical or maybe electrical but we can have mechanical to electrical convergence example could be strain finding out the strain or the stress on a machine member that can be done with with the instrument rather than with the direct comparison 
So, I am sorry for this, but uh, this depicts uh, LVDD for position sensing and this is again for you can say measurement of length. This can be also used for measurement of length, but this is a direct comparison. This is an indirect comparison where we use transducers, we use you know these filtering, recording, amplification and then we have connections with the computer. But here it is just a measurement by you know just human faculties where we measure the length of anything let us say by just moving or elongating this uh, steel rule tape. 